Hi everyone, it's Monday morning. I wanted to do a vlog where it's just my week at home so I can talk more, catch up with you guys. You guys have seen the last three vlogs have been travel. And of course I love traveling, but it is so good to be home. Just be able to reset, get back into routine. Pretty much every week in February, I was on a trip and it definitely took a toll on my body. I was feeling a little bit sick. Coming back from Vegas was terrible because our flight kept getting delayed. We left Vegas at 1.30 and we didn't get home until 4 a.m. But I took all of yesterday to relax in bed and now I feel so much better. I wanna show you guys my monthly reset routine. I have a budgeting and planner, different little templates I use. More of a chit chat vlog, which I like to watch. I don't know if you guys like those. Hey guys, it's 522. I am on my way to my cycling class at the gym. This is one of my favorite things about being home is taking this class. Today's class was super hard. They're high intensity, but you feel so good after because you sweat a ton. And I love showering at the gym. Lazy Sunday mornings, hiding under covers. I don't mind staying in with you. Play your favorite movie, laying right beside me. I don't mind when it's just us two. The corner coffee shop we like to go. Late night walks with you to take me home. With you, I never feel alone. These little songs make me glad to call you mine. And you have got my head in the clouds oh. One, two, three All that I need is your body next to me On rainy days, just need your company Don't need too much, just your simple love in itself Good morning guys, I am here early It's 7.30, got my coffee Let's go to the office Today's breakfast is acai bowls. I got a peanut butter jelly one. It's a rainy day in the city. I got coffee with the manager. And now I'm going to Bart. It's been raining all day today. I'm at the gym for my five o'clock bar class. Bar is similar to Pilates, but rather than target specific parts, it's more of a full body workout. And I really enjoy it. It's low impact, low intensity. Very different from the cycling that I did yesterday. This is another class that I love. I'm gonna go in and then do my same sauna shower routine. I was able to make it back from the city in time. Usually on days that I go into the office, I can't work out, which I don't like, but today it worked out, thankfully. I'll see you after my class. This next part I'm gonna show, I filmed a couple of weeks ago, but this is the process that I use to budget my money. I recently started budgeting when I got my full-time job and I found this amazing template from a YouTube video. I'll link it below. I cleared everything out for privacy reasons, but this is where I put in my monthly income. And then the main portion that I use is the savings. I contribute to a high yield savings account. And then through my employer, I have my 401k. I get my paychecks bi-weekly, so that's when I fill in my budget and just look over everything. Up here, I can put certain things I'm saving towards. For now, I'm just gonna put this as potential stay because I don't know if it is confirmed. This template comes with other tabs such as paycheck plan, spending plan, and debt payoff. I mainly just stick to the first tab. I could go through and fill this out, but I'm pretty good about not spending. I usually just pay off my credit cards at the end of the month. One section I do wanna add is my tithing. If you don't know what tithe is, it is giving a portion of your money to God, to the church. Tithe is one tenth of your money, 10%. And the reason I tithe is because everything I have, any money I can earn, it all belongs to God. So in returning one tenth, 10%, that's a fraction of God's money, it's already his. This money goes to the church, it goes to missionaries, serving in different parts of the world. This is definitely a very important section of my life, so I added that in. Again, if you guys want access to this template, I'm gonna link below the YouTube video. The girl that posted the video actually goes through and does 
her budgeting, filling it out. So if you want to see a specific example, I think the start of a year is always a good time to review your financials and set any goals. I don't think I can really give too much insight into budgeting and financials because I'm so new at it, but I think it is an important thing for young adults to do. Anyone really? Teens? It's six o'clock. I had to work a little bit over tonight, which means sadly I missed my gym classes. Because I'm at a desk all day, it feels so good to move my body after, but there's no time to work out today because it's my grandma's birthday and we're going to go get sushi to celebrate and then go to Emil's house and do cake. So no gym today, which is okay. I was gonna go on a quick walk, but I don't think I even have time for that. See you at the restaurant. I'm debating if I want to drink my La Colombe latte or this coffee uyu. I think I'm feeling this. You guys have never tried these. We get them from Costco. Kevin put us on and they're so good. I was actually going to go to Slow this weekend, but I need a weekend at home. It's been non-stop packing and unpacking. I just want to chill at home this weekend. I've been trying to go to Slow since September and I feel so bad for my friend Joss because I keep changing my dates. I was first trying to go in September and then with the holidays, everything was too hectic. And then I thought maybe January, but didn't work out. February, a lot of travel and we're already at March. One weekend this month I'll go. I have a couple trips in April, so that's gonna be too busy. I just booked my flights for our CNC trip, which is me, Lynn, Nat, Hey and Dan. We did a girls trip to LA last year and it was one of the most fun trips. I have vlogs from that trip, so you guys should go watch that. We're gonna film again this year. Hey everyone, happy Friday. This week flew by. Got my Friday treat. This is a secret menu drink. It's called Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I saw this online and they knew what I was talking about. This is so good. If you like cinnamon, highly recommend. It's a mix of two of their blends and then they put cinnamon in the filter. It is amazing. I've been liking Phil's and Joe and the Juice a lot. Kind of sick of Starbucks because we get that too much. I'm wearing Lynn's Taylor cardigan. It's the red album and it is adorable. My Sephora package arrived and I finally got my hands on the Drunk Elephant bronzing drops. My friend Taylor actually told me about these a couple years ago. They went viral and have been selling out for months. I'm hoping this will be good because my face is always pale. You're supposed to shake this. The sunscreen I've been using lately is this Glossier Invisible Shield. I'm just gonna do a couple pumps and you put in a couple drops and mix it into your hand. I'm actually super impressed. The combo of these two make for a perfect no makeup day because my skin actually looks really glowy. Very happy with these. This is a tiny bottle. It's a lot smaller than I thought. And I think it was like $36. So it's a little bit expensive, but it is a clean brand. So you're paying for good ingredients. When these restock, they sell out super quick. So keep your eye on it if you want to get it. I was going to put on more makeup, but I'm honestly happy with the way this looks. I think that's it. I also want to do my book review because I didn't do that yesterday. In January, I read these four books. I was on top of my reading game. And then in February, I only read one book. So I need to get back on it this month. I'm doing a reading competition with my sister and dad. I think we're betting $200. I'm not too worried because I know once I get back in my reading grind, I will beat them both. I want to do a quick recap of these. If you don't care about books, if this bores you, then you can skip over this segment. First book I read this year was Holly Jackson's Five Survive. This book is unique because it's written in real time. Start to finish, it's an eight hour story. That's how long it takes you to read it. It's about a group of friends on their spring break trip. Their RV breaks down, there's a sniper, and they need to figure out what's happening because they think one of them is involved. 
This wasn't as good as her other series, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, but it was still engaging. A little slow at times because it was happening in real time. But if you want a quick and easy read, I would still recommend this. I think I gave this 3.5 stars. Number two is The Stranger in the Mirror by Liv Constantine. It's a psychological thriller. It's about a woman who has retrograde amnesia, so she doesn't remember any of her past life. And on the flip side, you hear the POV of the husband who has been looking for his wife for two years. One day she just disappeared. Like every other book in this genre, it's crazy, filled with twists and turns. I liked her other book better, The Last Mrs. Parish. Four stars out of five. Number three is Regretting You by Colleen Hoover. Only thing I regret is reading this book. It is not good. This is the first Colleen Hoover book I've been let down by. This book is about a mother and a daughter. You hear from both of their POVs. It talks about a tragedy that happens and their healing process. I thought it was gonna be super deep and all about the mother-daughter relationship. I think it had potential to be good, but it just missed the mark. Two stars. I would say those first three books were kind of mid. And then I read Daisy Jones and the Six. This book is phenomenal. I've been wanting to read this since last year. It's about a 70s rock band, Daisy Jones and the Six. Taylor Jenkins Reid does the best job of writing historical fiction. She pulls you into the time period she's writing about. So this obviously takes place in California in the 60s and 70s. The style of this writing is super unique. It's oral history, kind of like you're reading a documentary script because it takes place in the future where all the characters are retelling their adventures when they were in the band. I read 80% of this book in one sitting because I couldn't put it down. The characters, the vibe, the story, it's all so good. And they also just made a TV adaptation of this and it looks pretty good, so excited to watch that. This was five stars for me, hands down. In February, I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I can't find my copy. It's here somewhere. Another TJR book. I think that one's her most popular one. This is definitely an unpopular opinion, but I think Daisy Jones was better than Evelyn. Evelyn is also super good, but I think the world building and the nostalgia is just greater in this one. I love Evelyn as a character though. I think I gave that one four stars. My favorite TJR books are definitely Daisy Jones and Malibu Rising. I don't know how I would rank those two. That's my book recap for January and February. Like I said, I'm slacking right now. I've just been watching a ton of TV. My mom and I have been on the biggest survivor kick. We finished the two seasons on Netflix and now we're watching one, the most recent one on YouTube TV. And it is so good. It's the best show. I grew up watching Endurance, which was my childhood. It's like a teen version of Survivor. Survivor is amazing. If you've never seen it, go watch it. I wanted to share this one video that my dad showed me yesterday. So this pastor is answering commonly asked questions. And I thought these videos were so good. It's something that everyone should hear. I'm gonna play this video now. Not be convinced yet. A lot of people struggle with this good thing. They think, but my neighbor, they're a good person. They take care of their family. How can they go to hell? Well, let me give you an analogy. I was on a secular radio talk show across the nation, Chicago, New York, Miami, everything. And they said, Bill, watch your back with this guy. He does not like Christians. He will spit you off the air in about two minutes. And so I went on the air, and the first thing he said was, okay, Christian, don't you quote one Bible verse to me over my airwaves. You got that? No Bible. I said, okay. And he says, I submit to you that you Christians are unreasonable, and your God is unreasonable if you don't consider my viewpoint. My viewpoint is just as valid as you Christian, and I'm a good person, and I should be let into heaven. And if your God doesn't let me into heaven, he's actually guilty of a hate crime. That's what he said. So what do you got to say for yourself, Christian? Well, what do you say? You're live on the air. Well, God gave me an analogy. Praise God, you know. <clears throat> I said, okay, you think you're a good person. You should go to heaven. I said, say you went and found the most expensive home in the country and knocked on their door. And you said, oh, excuse me, but I'm moving in with you because I'm a good person. What do you think the people would say? No, right? You wouldn't expect them to. You don't know them. You have no relationship with them. I said, but you, you go through your whole life without God. You deny Jesus as the son of God, which he said is the only way to his house. Then at the end of your life, you have the nerve to come knock on his door, demand to live there because you're a good person. What does good have to do with it? You don't know him. You don't know him. I said, God offered to be your father throughout your whole life, but you pushed him away. You just said, no, I don't want you as my father. I'm not interested. See, God is your creator. He's not your father to you inviting Jesus as your savior. Then he becomes your father. So I said, that's unreasonable to expect to live with someone's house that you don't even know. He says, I thank God that all roads lead to heaven. I said, okay, let me give you another analogy. I said, say you went and invite me, and God gave me this analogy. I said, say you invite me over to your home for dinner. 
And you said, Bill, I want you to go south on Highway 95, turn right at Main Street, go up the hill, you'll come to my house. But that's the only way to get to my house. And I say to you, you know what? I think I'm going to go north on 95. I'm going to get off at Beach Boulevard because I think all roads lead to your house. That's what I think. Well, you're going to tell me, Bill, you're not going to get to my house. I'm trying to give you clear directions to my house. The same way God gives us clear directions to his house. That's not narrow-minded. God is specific. He's given us specific, clear directions of how to get to his house. And see, people think God's up there arbitrarily saying, well, this one goes to heaven, this one goes to hell. It's not that way. All of us above the age of accountability are automatically on the road to hell. John 3, 17 and 18 says we're condemned already because we're born in sin. Psalms 51, 2. So it's different than being sent there. We're already going there. That's why Jesus came and planted a cross right in the middle of that road that we're all on. So all we have to do is repent. (laughs) Repent and he'll take us off that road and bring us into heaven. I'm gonna briefly talk about my takeaways from this. One of the biggest transformations I saw in my life when I was saved was my awareness of my own sin and personal lacking. And this may sound like a negative thing, but bear with me. When you accept Christ into your life, he reveals so much to you about yourself. I would say a lot of people probably think of themselves as good people. I always thought I'm a good person. I care for others, I'm nice, I'm selfless all these things while not recognizing the not so great things about me. My stubbornness, my pride, my selfish ambition, just all these little things that I wouldn't give a thought to because I would think overall I'm a good person. But the amazing thing about our God is that you can come to him with every fault, every mistake, every hurt you've caused, and no person is too broken or too far to go to the Lord and repent of their sins. I've seen so many incredible testimonies of people who had been anti-God their whole life, but God transformed 